Hey everybody, my name is Megan Galloway and for today's video, we are going to continue on with our topic of the common discomforts of pregnancy. And remember, if you like this video and you wanna learn more about women's health and pregnancy, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to my channel. In our last video, we left off by talking a little bit about cramping. Cramping can be pretty common in pregnancy and it's normal most likely if it's not severe and it's not associated with things like bleeding or thinking your water's broken. It can especially be common in the first trimester. Your uterus starts out about the size of a fist, and as it grows and stretches, it tends to have a little bit of cramping associated with it. Cramping can also happen outside of the first trimester. Sometimes you'll notice you have some cramping because you're a little dehydrated or because you've had a particularly busy day or done a heavy workout. If this happens and it's not severe or associated with other symptoms, what I usually recommend is take a rest, drink some water, put your feet up, take a warm bath, and see if it goes away. If it's lasting for a long time or it's getting worse, that would be a reason to seek care. It's important to note the difference between contractions and cramping. Cramping is usually not very severe and it just kind of goes on forever and ever and ever. Contractions are usually a lot more painful than cramping and they have an appreciable start and finish. Ultimately, if you're having abdominal pain and you're not sure if it's normal cramping or if it's contractions you should be concerned about, you need to talk to your healthcare provider or be evaluated in an ER. Now, contractions are normal if you're beyond 37 weeks and you're actually in labor. So if that's happening, follow the guidance set forth by your healthcare provider and present to the hospital when it's time to have your baby. With that being said, the next topic we'll talk about is Braxton Hicks contractions. So Braxton Hicks contractions are technically contractions but they're not painful. They just feel like a tightening of the uterus. Now, don't get me wrong. Braxton Hicks contractions can be pretty uncomfortable. They sometimes make it feel like your belly's in a vice grip, and they can even make you feel a little short of breath at times. But the difference between Braxton Hicks contractions and labor contractions is that Braxton Hicks contractions are not technically painful while labor contractions are. Braxton Hicks contractions can happen in most pregnancies. A lot of times they happen more frequently in women who've had babies before, but first time moms can get Braxton Hicks contractions as well. Usually any time after 20 weeks, they can be normal. Now, if you're a first time mom, you may not know that you're having Braxton Hicks contractions. You may just think, oh man, my baby's moving a lot. But a lot of times when women come in for their prenatal visits. They'll lay back, I'll measure the height of their belly, and I'll tell them, oh, your stomach's really hard right now, you're having a Braxton Hicks. And for them, it's usually a really fun aha moment because they're like, I've been having these all the time, I just thought my baby was moving. For those of you who've had babies before, you probably know what you're experiencing, and you'll probably notice that they get more and more frequent as your pregnancy progresses. The thing about having had a baby before is that the uterus is a big muscle and it has a lot of muscle memory. So when it's been through labor before, it's likely to remember how to contract and to do that more frequently when you've had a busy day or at the end of your day or when you're sleeping or when you're dehydrated. Like I said, Braxton Hicks contractions can be very uncomfortable, but they are a normal function of pregnancy as long as they're not painful and regular. So if you're having Braxton Hicks contractions, be rest assured, your uterus is just preparing yourself for labor. If you're struggling with Braxton Hicks contractions being uncomfortable, make sure you hydrate. I know, I know, I'm sure you're surprised that I'm suggesting that. The uterus is just a really big muscle, and when that muscle gets dehydrated, it tends to contract. The other thing you can think about doing is getting a pregnancy support band. Pregnancy support bands lift the belly out of the pelvis and usually stabilize those muscles so that they're less likely to react when you're dehydrated or have had a busy day. Pregnancy support bands can also be helpful in reducing a lot of the other musculoskeletal discomforts of pregnancy. So the next few things we're going to talk about are low back pain, round ligament pain, symphysis pubis pain, and sacroiliac joint pain. Low back pain in pregnancy is really common and really sucky. The reason it happens is because you are gaining all of your weight here. The average amount of weight for a uterus, a placenta, the amniotic fluid, and the baby is 11 to 14 pounds. And when that is all put right here, it strains all the muscles in your abdomen and your low back. It's just a lot of weight to ask your back muscles to hold up. So what can you do about it? You guessed it, you can hydrate and you can exercise. Exercise is really important for helping stabilize those core muscles and make them strong enough to be able to support the extra weight of your belly. I like to recommend 
10 minutes a day at least of prenatal yoga or prenatal Pilates because that can actually help those core muscles stay strong enough to keep that weight in check. You're also welcome to seek chiropractic care, get a prenatal massage, go to acupuncture, or your healthcare provider might recommend going to physical therapy. Round ligament pain is similar but different. It also involves a growing uterus, but round ligament pain is caused by an overstretching of the ligaments that support the uterus on both sides. Now, like we talked about, your uterus started out the size of a fist, and once your baby's grown, it's all the way up here inside your belly. And those ligaments, which start out basically at your pubic bone and attach to the top part of your uterus, they start out about this short and they stretch to where they're about this long. So if you think about it, the overstretching of those ligaments, it's normal for them to be a little bit painful when they're overstretched. Have you ever sprained an ankle? If you're like me, you've sprained your ankle a few times. When you sprain your ankle, the ankle rolls and it turns and overstretches the ligaments on the outside of that ligament. Apply that then to the uterus and you get round ligament pain. An overstretched ligament is a painful ligament. Round ligament pain typically presents with pain on one side of the pelvis or abdomen or the other. It's usually pretty low down almost into your groin. Usually it happens on one side or the other and rarely does it happen at both sides at once. Typically round ligament pain is painful but it's not severe and it's not long lasting. You may notice that it happens after you exercise or specifically once you roll over in bed. Unfortunately round ligament pain is hard to treat. One of the things you can do is say it with me, hydrate. Hydration brings extra blood flow to those ligaments and allows them to be more healthy and to stretch more effectively. Some women also find a pregnancy support band to be helpful because again, it takes the uterus and holds it up with the band itself rather than keeping the strain on those ligaments. Ultimately, if you're not sure whether your pain is round ligament pain or something that's dangerous, you should still go talk to your healthcare provider. But it is a really common diagnosis in pregnancy and one that a lot of women experience. Speaking of where the round ligament attaches, let's talk about pubic symphysis pain or symphysis pubis pain in pregnancy. Now this is very common for some women and it happens because of a hormone called relaxin. Now relaxin is a hormone that you secrete during your pregnancy that does exactly what what it sounds like. It relaxes everything. Now, if you want to have a vaginal birth, you're going to be really thankful for the hormone relaxin. What it does is allow the ligaments and muscles of your pelvis to relax and mobilize so that it wiggles and moves so that your baby can come out of your pelvis safely. Unfortunately, this means that your normally very stable pubic symphysis is not so stable anymore. And so what happens is when the bones of your pelvis come together at your pubic symphysis, they do this and wiggle, and that cartilage in between where your pubic symphysis is tends to get very irritated. Unfortunately, much like round ligament pain, there's not a ton we can do about this. You can try chiropractic care, sometimes physical therapy helps, but ultimately you're not gonna get rid of relaxin because it's naturally produced in your pregnancy, and that hormone is the cause of your pubic symphysis pain. Chiropractic, massage, Physical therapy and acupuncture can not only treat things like pubic symphysis pain and sometimes round ligament pain and sometimes low back pain, but they can also help treat sacroiliac joint pain. So what is sacroiliac joint pain? Your sacroiliac joint is the joint in your pelvis that's right back here at the top of your buttocks and the lower part of your back. There's a nerve that gets irritated during your pregnancy and it is the cause of your sacroiliac joint pain. It can sometimes cause a lot of pain specifically in that area. Most of the time it's one-sided, but sometimes people have it on both sides. And a lot of times it shoots down the back of your leg. It can be pretty painful. And for some women, it can actually be kind of debilitating. It can make it hard to walk at times. And if that's the case, you definitely need to go see a physical therapist so that they can work with you on stabilizing that joint and helping those muscles strengthen to where you can walk better. Speaking of leg discomfort, we're gonna start talking about restless leg syndrome and leg cramping. Restless leg syndrome, again, very common in pregnancy. It usually happens at nighttime and it can be treated by taking a magnesium supplement at nighttime, making sure you're hydrated and increasing potassium in your diet. Restless leg syndrome is not usually painful, but some people get a lot of leg cramping during the nighttime while they're pregnant as well. It might feel like Charlie horses and it can be really uncomfortable and make it difficult to sleep. 
Leg cramping is common, but it should never be associated with swelling, with heat, and with redness. If you are getting leg pain, especially in one calf or the other, and it's associated with swelling, redness, and heat, this could actually be a sign of a blood clot. Now, blood clots are more common in pregnant women, and so if you think you have a blood clot, make sure to go to the ER because you will need to be evaluated immediately. Now, let's move on from the legs to the wrists and the hands. Let's talk about carpal tunnel of pregnancy. Carpal tunnel of pregnancy is again, a common discomfort of pregnancy, and it's usually only noticeable in the third trimester. For some people, it's fairly mild, and for others, it's fairly debilitating. It usually feels like a numbness and tingling that goes from the wrist to the tips of the fingers. This numbness and tingling can sometimes be painful and sometimes make it really hard to grip things. Carpal tunnel of pregnancy happens because of swelling in the wrist joints. This swelling may not even be noticeable, but it does cause pressure on the nerves there, which then makes your fingers feel numb and tingly. The good news, it almost always goes away right after pregnancy. The bad news, there's not a lot that can be done to treat it during pregnancy. Some women find that wearing wrist braces at night can actually help them sleep better and feel better in the morning. Some women try acupuncture, some women women try chiropractic, some women try physical therapy. Most of these things are only short-term fixes and don't actually fix the problem because the problem is swelling and swelling is really hard to get rid of until after you're pregnant. Speaking of swelling, swelling is another common pregnancy discomfort. Swelling can be very minor, like swelling in the wrist that causes carpal tunnel. You also may get some micro swelling in your nasal passages, and it makes you feel stuffy and have a little bit of a hard time breathing sometimes in pregnancy. Swelling can also be major. A lot of women, especially as they move forward in their pregnancy, will find that they get swelling in their lower legs ankles and feet. This is very common and sometimes treatable. A lot of times I recommend compression stockings. Compression stockings are great. You wear them over your feet and your calves. Some of them even go all the way up to your hips. And this helps push the blood and the swelling up from the bottom so that it doesn't pool in your legs and feet. Staying hydrated is another thing that can help. If you keep your kidneys functioning well by staying hydrated, as counterintuitive as it sounds to put more liquid into your body, it actually helps flush that swelling out through your urine. Some women also like to have a little foot massage before bed, so if you can talk your partner or a family member into doing that for you, it can be helpful. Some women also find that hydrotherapy can be effective so swimming in a pool or having a bath before bed can sometimes make the swelling less significant. I also typically advise a pregnancy support band. What it does is pull the uterus out of the pelvis so that the blood can flow more naturally back up through the pelvic vessels and therefore decreases the amount of blood and swelling that happens in your lower extremities. Again, swelling can be very common in pregnancy, especially in the third trimester. Swelling that is not normal is full body swelling and swelling that has a rapid onset. So if you think, oh my gosh, I just gained 15 pounds of water weight overnight, that's not normal. You wanna to talk to your healthcare provider about this because it can sometimes be associated with some pregnancy blood pressure disorders. The last discomfort we're going to talk about is heartburn and or acid reflux. Heartburn is common in pregnancy. It can happen throughout pregnancy, but again is most common in the third trimester. It happens for two reasons. The first is again, progesterone. Progesterone slows the digestion and so it doesn't let the stomach empty quite as well as it normally does. The second reason Reason is because of your growing uterus. When your uterus gets up into your ribs, it's putting a lot of upward pressure on your stomach. It makes it hard for that stomach to empty and it makes a lot of that food and acid reflux travel right back up your esophagus to where it's causing you discomfort. One way to prevent heartburn is to avoid trigger foods. So trigger foods are typically anything that's acidic, anything that's fried, and anything that's spicy. Chocolate and coffee are also big players in this game. Eating too close to bedtime also tends to increase acid reflux. Some women find that eating dinner a little bit earlier and making sure to avoid snacking leading up to bedtime can be helpful in preventing heartburn and acid reflux. 
Most women find that acid reflux is worse when they're lying flat in bed or sleeping. This is simply because of gravity. When you're lying flat, the food in the acid has a chance to rise back up that esophagus and cause you discomfort. So you might find that sleeping in a slightly upright position is also helpful. If these things aren't working, you can also try papaya enzymes over the counter to help with your acid reflux. Papaya enzymes are safe and natural, and they are just a digestive enzyme. Most people use them after each meal and before bed as directed on the bottle. If papaya enzymes aren't working, you can try Tums. Tums are great. They're over the counter and they're used in the moment to treat heartburn. The one thing you want to be aware of with Tums, however, is that you really shouldn't have too many of them in a day because they're just made of calcium. And if you have too much calcium, you can actually increase your risk of kidney stones. If none of these things is working, you might need a daily antacid. You can get some of these over the counter or you can ask your healthcare provider to prescribe them for you. But before trying any of these medications, you want to make sure to talk to your healthcare provider about which ones are safe for pregnancy. Okay, that concludes our very long list of 20 different discomforts of pregnancy. I'm sure there are more that I didn't mention here. So if you are thinking about your own discomforts and you have questions or thoughts on them, please make sure to comment below. And if you didn't get a chance to watch my first video on this series, make sure to click on this video right here. As a reminder, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about pregnancy and women's health topics. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there and stay healthy, everybody.